Hi, my name is Sarah, and my mom is my best friend. She's amazing. She's a doctor, and she's raising me all by herself. She gives me everything I could want and need. I want to be just like her when I grow up. Do you look up to your mom too? Please don't forget to click the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks. I couldn't wait for school to end. It was my birthday the next day, and mom said that I was going to get the newest Apple Watch after her shift at the hospital a few blocks away from the mall when her phone rang. Dr. Johnson? A panicky voice from the car speaker said, Jill is giving birth right now. We're not going to make it to the hospital. Mom quickly turned a corner. She told the man that she was on her way. Sorry, honey, she said to me. It's a good thing that we're close to their house. We can go shopping after. I quickly nodded. My mom made another call and instructed the hospital to send an ambulance right away. Mom stopped the car and jumped out. I followed her into the house. A very pregnant woman was kneeling beside the couch, and there was a puddle of water under her legs. Mom ran over to the woman and asked her husband for some clean towels. It's all right, Jill, she said. I'm here, and it's time for you to push. I watched in awe by the door. The woman was crying and pushing and screaming. Her husband was sweating and running around with a ton of towels. It was chaos. My mom was the only calm person in the room. Suddenly, I heard another sound break through the screams and pants. It was the sound of a crying baby. She's here, mom announced. Your daughter has arrived. Jill gasped when my mom handed her the baby. My jaw dropped when I realized that I'd just seen one being born. It was scary and incredible at the same time. The ambulance arrived a few minutes later, and my mom gently patted Jill's hand. Everything's fine, she added with a gentle smile. I'll check in on you at the hospital. We headed back to our own car. Mom said that we'd have to go home first so she could change. Are you all right, honey? She asked me. You look pale. I guess I did. I was still in shock. You were amazing, mom. I replied in wonderment. You didn't freak out at all. That woman looked like she was in so much pain. But the moment you handed her the baby, it seemed like she forgot about everything else. My mom squeezed my hand. That's how I felt when I gave birth to you, she said. It's joy and pain all at once. And it's all worth it, especially if her child ends up being a wonderful daughter like you. She added that around 250 babies are born every minute. Wow! That means that there are 250 soon-to-be mothers going into labor right now! I gasped. No wonder my mom was doing so well as an obstetrician. She delivered a new baby every few days. Mom headed for the shower as soon as we got home. While I waited for her, the phone rang. It was my dad. You're not going to believe what I saw today! I said, and I told him about watching my mom do her work. Dad laughed and proudly proclaimed that my mom was amazing. When your brother Josh was born... Emma was screaming and miserable too, until she held him in his arms. When can you come and visit anyway? He misses you already. I promised that I would visit my dad and his new family soon. I loved playing with my half-brother Josh. He was so cute. My dad's wife, Emma, wasn't so bad. But it still bugged me that my parents had never married. Emma wasn't half as amazing as my mom. After a few weeks, mom came home looking very excited. I got promoted, she said. I'm going to be head of the department. I was so happy for her. And when I found out she wasn't going to be working as much, I was so happy for me too. It meant that we could spend more time together. It was great. We had picnics and played frisbee in the front yard. I was standing by the porch when the frisbee came whizzing my way. I jumped, but I must have landed wrong. The next thing I knew, there was blood flowing down my forehead. Sarah! Mom cried as she ran towards me. I think I hit my head on the edge of the step. I complained. It really hurts. Mom cleaned up my wound. She said it wasn't deep and I just needed to apply pressure to it. She made me some of my favorite mac and cheese and sent me to bed early. That night, I remember thinking that I was the luckiest girl in the world for having such an amazing mother. But sadly, our fun times ended that day. The next few months were a busy time at the hospital. Mom was rarely home. She left early and came home late. I started to complain about never seeing her anymore. She still keeps giving me gifts, but I didn't want a new Instax camera or another new phone. I just wanted her. I couldn't talk to her anymore because she never had time for me. When I turned 14, things got even worse. Mom couldn't be with me on my birthday. I had to stay with my dad for a few days while mom was at a conference. I could see that Emma was trying to be nice, but I didn't want her. I wanted my mom. I made your favorite mac and cheese, she proudly said. I took a bite, but I spit it out immediately. Ew, I cried. This tastes gross. It's not like mom's mac and cheese at all. Dad got mad when I said that. I gave him the side eye while he and Emma played with little Josh. If he hadn't married that awful Emma, he would have married my mom. And maybe she wouldn't have to work so hard all the time. I was counting down the hours until mom arrived to pick me up. Then the phone rang. It was mom, but she said she was running late. 
I got so mad at her for making me wait again. When I get home, she said, we'll go on a vacation, just the two of us, okay? I promise you're going to have a great time. But I was sick of her promises. I don't believe you anymore, I screamed back at her. I don't care if you don't ever come home. When you're here, you don't even notice me. I wish you weren't my mother. I slammed the phone down and ran to my room. I was so mad at everyone. Dad tried to talk to me, but I didn't open the door. Finally, he left. But after an hour, he was back again. Sarah! He cried with a voice I'd never heard him use before. We have to go to the hospital! I couldn't believe my ears when he explained that Mom was in the hospital. She had gotten into a car crash just an hour ago. But I just talked to her! I cried. I was so scared the whole time in the car. I was terrified for my mom. And deep down, I knew it was my fault. Mom probably got so upset after I screamed at her. That was the reason she got into a crash. I wanted to tell her that I didn't mean what I said. I wanted to tell her that I loved her so much. They wouldn't even let me see her when we got to the hospital. One doctor came out and talked to us instead. I'm sorry, he said. She's in a bad way. We're doing everything we can, but I don't think it's going to be enough. You have to prepare yourself for the worst. I turned to my dad. What did he mean by that? I gasped. Dad couldn't even look me in the eye. He quietly told me to pray for mom. I couldn't take it anymore. I knew my mom was suffering and it was all my fault. I couldn't stop the tears. I stumbled away and ran as fast as my legs could take me to the exit. Outside, I found myself by a bus stop and I got on the first bus that passed, not caring where it took me as long as it was far away from here. Hours passed into days. I can't remember how I got where I was. The only real thing I felt was the hard bench I slept on and the gaping hole in my chest where my heart used to be. I was to blame for everything. It hurt so much to remember the last thing I said to her. How could I be such a terrible person after everything my mom had done for me? I was just sitting and staring into space when I heard the scream. Right in front of me, sprawled on the curb, was an older girl with a bleeding forehead. I jumped up and ran over to her. Hold still, I said soothingly. Let me check if it's deep. Thankfully, the wound was shallow. I took off my jacket and told the girl to apply pressure on it. Then I asked if there was a place where we could wash it. I sleep in the woman's shelter, she gasped as I helped her up. It's just a few blocks away. The shelter was a dirty place, and it was very crowded. But at least there was running water and soap in the bathroom. After a while, the girl calmed down. Thanks, she said. I was so scared. I thought I'd split my skull open. For the first time in a long time, I smiled. It felt nice to help someone. Do you have a place to stay? She asked. My name is Maggie. You can stay in the shelter with me if you want. Maggie and I became friends. She brought me to a soup kitchen where we ate a hot meal. She led me to a church basement so I could find a jacket. Maggie was nice. And for a while, I forgot that I was homeless and alone. But no matter what I did, I could never forget the last words I ever spoke to my mom. I told Maggie that I ran away, but I didn't tell her why. Life went on that way for a long time. It was hard to accept my new life, but I had no other choice. The shelter was always full of girls who had run away or who were in trouble. There was a young mom named Stella who had a little boy. She said that she used to have a small apartment and that she worked three jobs just to pay for rent and food, but it wasn't enough. She lost her home and now she was struggling to feed her little boy. But no matter where we end up, Stella told me, as long as my baby Jasper is with me, we'll be fine. I couldn't help but think about my mom when I looked at her. Mom worked so hard just to give me a good life. But I could see now that I was ungrateful, spoiled, and mean. If I'd been a better daughter, I would still be with her. A few months later, I noticed that Maggie had started throwing up a lot. At first, I thought she had food poisoning. It's not the food, Maggie said. I think I'm pregnant. I was shocked. Maggie was just a few years older than me. How was she going to have a baby in this situation? Poor Maggie was miserable the whole time. She was too tired and too weak to do anything. All she did was sleep while her belly grew bigger. I did everything I could just to make life easier for her, but Maggie was having a really hard time with her pregnancy. Thankfully, the shelter allowed her to stay. They told me that I could stay for as long as I liked to, but that was because I was the only one who could tie a bandage or examine the injuries of girls who just arrived. We became a family, but I never really belonged there. Monsters like me don't deserve to belong anywhere. Another few months went by. Then one night, Maggie woke up everyone with her screams. It hurts so bad, she yelled. The other girls shrank back in fear, but I couldn't. Maggie was my friend. I held her hand while she screamed in pain. Then her water broke. I think the baby is coming now, she gasped. I was terrified. 
but I was the only one who could help her. I asked the girls to find clean towels. As I looked at Maggie's anguished face, I remembered the other woman, Jill. My mom delivered her baby in the living room. It's all right, Maggie, I said. I'm here, and it's time for you to push. She did, over and over again. In a matter of minutes, the baby came. I wrapped the baby in a clean towel and handed it to her. Like Jill, she forgot that she had just been screaming a few seconds ago. She forgot that she was in a shelter. She forgot that she was broke. All that mattered was that little baby in her arms. I couldn't believe what I'd just done, and I couldn't believe the transformation on Maggie's face. I was so relieved when someone said that the ambulance was here. Maggie kept insisting that I go to the hospital with her. Then the doctors checked her and the baby out. After a few moments, the doctor came to talk to me. Maggie said that you delivered her baby, she said. How old are you? I told her I was only 16. To be honest, I was so scared, I added. It happened so quickly, but now I'm just exhausted. The doctor laughed and told me that I did a good job. I felt really proud. Then I wondered if my mom would have been proud of me too, if she knew. Maggie went back to the shelter a few days later. She kept thanking me and she said she'd named the baby after me. She also went back to her parents' house. It was different now that little Sarah was here. Then she told me that a TV news crew had interviewed her at the hospital. And that's how her parents had found her. I think that's how my dad found me too. He and Emma arrived a few days later to take me home. My dad hugged me so tightly. I wanted to tell him about everything that had happened, but no words came out. I could only cry. Emma wiped away my tears. It's time to go home now, Sarah, she said, and I nodded. So we got back into the car and drove home. But after a few hours, I realized that we weren't going back to their house. We were on a long road with big longs on both sides of the street. My breath caught in my throat. It looked like we were driving to the cemetery. I can't do this right now, I said, and I began to panic. My dad was firm. It's time to face it, dad said. You've run away long enough. I wanted to apologize to my mom, but I didn't think I was ready to see her grave. Everything's going to be fine, Emma added. Don't worry. Dad parked the car and they led me towards a building. I was confused. Why was there a building in the middle of a cemetery? But it wasn't a cemetery after all. We walked down a series of corridors and knocked on a door. It took some time for it to open, but when it did, I gasped. Mom was inside. She was very thin, but she was alive. I'm so sorry, I gasped, and I ran to hug her. You've gotten so big, Mom cried. I was so worried about you. Please don't blame yourself for the accident, Mom said while she stroked my cheek. A car crashed into mine while I was driving home. I can't walk anymore, but it's not your fault, Sarah. Suddenly, Mom made a fist and banged it on the bed. How I wish I could take care of you, she cried. But I can barely take care of myself. I took Mom's hand. Even in her state, her main concern was taking care of me. Then everything I saw about mothers and their children flashed through my mind. Emma with Josh, Stella with her son, and even Maggie with her new daughter. Mom, I whispered, with fresh tears running down my face. It's time to go home, together. You looked after me better than any mom ever could. And now, it's time for me to do the same for you.